Hey listeners, Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network. I get the privilege of working alongside all of our creators at Enrollify, but I wanted to take just a quick moment to tell you about why I love the Talking Tactics podcast hosted by Diana Kibbolds. Every other Tuesday, Day drops a new episode where she focuses on a single tactic that moved the needle on any enrollment metric, from inquiries and booth visitors to apps completed and deposits, even registrations, you name it. The catch? The tactic had to be done with limited resources, either by a single person or a small but mighty team, or limited time, or maybe without a lot of money. The podcast format is fun and engaging, and it's just different from the more traditional 60-minute interview-style shows. If you work in enrollment management or marketing, be sure to give Day's show a listen. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or just search Talking Tactics wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, welcome to Generation AI, the podcast where we demystify artificial intelligence in the world of higher education. I'm your host, Artis Kadu. Joined with me today is my insightful co-host, JC Bonilla. Hey, JC. Hey, Artis. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here today. A rainy, lovely summer, rainy day in the south shore of Long Island, the mist of the summer. I love where we are with the summer vibes, and sometimes the summer rain is the absolute best. How are you doing with this summer, kind of mid-summer point that we're in, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's raining here as well. Um, I actually, this this past week or this week, you know, I was at uh, Philadelphia. So I was in Philly for through four days. Uh, I actually drove up there. I didn't realize I was like, oh, it's going to be maybe a six-hour drive. It turns out to be a little bit longer than that. And then uh, just came back last night. So so just jumping back in, uh, it was the EduWeb conference. I had a AI workshop, a three-hour AI masterclass workshop in the beginning of the conference. And then I had the closing keynote at the end of the conference oh, wow. talking all about AI and the AI Ready Campus. So it was good. What's the punchline of the keynote? For those of us who didn't see it, like there's a one sentence that you've kind of brings all together. What is it? Uh, I do actually have a, a slide for that. And it really revolves around kind of our, our, our mission that we're trying to do, which is personalized engagement at scale mm. requires AI. Like that's the punchline. Yeah. So it's like bringing everything all together. It's like we've been working towards, you know what I mean? Like we talk about personalization and engagement and students and, and how we can help them. And at the end of the day, like we can be blue in our face and talk all about it. And it's like, oh, there is this technique and that technique, but you just have to do the, the actions and the things in order to get that personalization. And you can't do that without having a mass production capability, which only AI can provide that right now. If we were to backtrack years ago, decades ago, and, and talk about the epic uh, nirvana of personalization where information will be for me at the time that I want and know that it cannot be done by humans, but the true scalability is machine driven, it would be such a really strange counterfact. What do you mean that to reach personalization, which defines me as a person, I cannot be done by another person, right? And today, the fact that we know that and that we can make that claim, it's very revealing because it's true but it also signals the maturity that we are, that we reach a society that human and machine starting to coexist, right? Uh, remember that book that we spoke about over um, a few months ago, Cointelligence? It's true, right? And um, for it to do what it's supposed to be doing today, in a way, things that we're gonna be unpacking in the next episodes, brother, the understanding what machines do and how we coexist is super, super important, right? Um, trust in, not trusting, creating the guardrails, regulation, all that stuff is super, super important. Great. So artists, with, with that rant of human machines, uh, what do we have uh, today? So today we're, we're going to be talking a, a little bit about kind of the evolution of AI and the capabilities of AI. And it's really interesting because OpenAI just got a new report card for the AI progress, right? And they're 
giving themselves kind of a single star, maybe two in there. Out of how many? There's five, right? There is this idea of the five stages of AI that they have defined. You grade your own homework and you give yourself an F? That's an interesting statement. Well, it's just that, hey, we're, we're kind of in that first level. We haven't gotten there yet, right? So the ultimate goal or the mission of OpenAI is to achieve what's called AGI or artificial general intelligence, right? And for, for a lot of us, Nick, there, we, we have this, this notion of what AI is and we wrap everything around it. And when I do my workshops and when I do my, my teaching around the AI learning is that AI, is, the term has been around since the 50s. We've talked about this, right? It's been around since the 50s. And it's really this idea that how do we make machines act and feel uh, and have the capabilities of humans, right? So artificial general intelligence is this notion that we can build artificial intelligence that can learn new problems and can solve anything. Like if you introduce a new problem, it's able to solve that in a generic way. So it doesn't have to be trained on a specific task or a specific problem, but it's able to decompose and learn and do new things. So that's the artificial intelligence, the AGI component of it. And just, just to double click on that, right? So everybody remember that there are epics and monumental theories, utopias, if you will, that we want to see with technology as it relates to uh, artificial intelligence. There's something about the Turing machine, right? That is a test that you don't know you're talking to technology, right? And I think that from my perspective, we're there, right? But the advancement of technology and AI specifically is so human-like but the hand holding behind that human-like technology, right, that may pass the Turing test, it's real. So to Artis's point, AGI is this idea that the hand holding is removed. All of a sudden, I train you algorithm to learn how to do coffee. Now, the same algorithm learns how to wash a car. And specifically, I'm talking about an algorithm that has machines and in arms and like think about a Roomba that it's trained to sweep the floor and doesn't commit suicide, literally jumps out of a second floor, things of that sort, right? And now learns, I don't know, to crawl the walls and wash the, the dishes, right? That's the type of epic that we're talking about, that the scope of the training algorithm, in a way, could it, uh, advance in its generative, in that sense, I like the word generative as a function or semantic function of a new dimension comes in, right? So it cre recreates something different. In that stage, what you're saying is from this core card, there's five stages. Where we are with AI, yeah, exactly. Oh, we are, right? And, yep. and we're going to walk through these five stages today, knowing that stage one is today. And very soon, two, three, four, and five may all be coming. So let's talk about them, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so the, the four state, like we can go very quickly through these and then we can kind of convert back and, and start talking individually. Well, actually, let's do that one by one, right? So, stage one is chatbots and AI with conversational language. So, so essentially, building chatbots that can be very conversational, just like humans. And that's the first level of artificial intelligence. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this Roomba. I'm gonna push this Roomba analogy, so let's see if it works. So here is basically the Roomba, basically taking instructions from your command. Hey, go back, you left there, right? And it understands where you came from, all this type of thing. So the Roomba has a conversational aspect and it kind of does that, right? I'm not, I don't like the Roomba analogy. I don't know if that's- Ah, uh, God damn it, it was, I, cause I, I was gonna make the Roomba dance. So I was You're gonna make the Roomba anyway, dance? I was gonna make the Roomba dance. It's fine, if you don't think it's a good one, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to make it very uh, tangible. Well, let, let's do capability wise, right? So let's think about capability wise. Think about maybe a humanoid robot or maybe capabilities that we have like a virtual assistant. Think about a virtual assistant, like Clippy as a virtual assistant, right? <laughs> Imagine that. So, so this virtual assistant methodology has come a, a long way uh, since then. So now we're that version one is like this virtual assistant can communicate with you and can be can be a chatbot and can be very conversational. So that's level one. Gotcha. So Clippy, I am able to go back and forth with that chat 
and it's human-like. I really don't know I'm talking to a machine, right? And I get that stuff. Super. What happens on, on the other levels? So we're already there with the chatbots, right? So we're already there. We saw ChatGPT. We're, we're incorporating these conversational interfaces in a lot of the things that we're doing. Version 3.5 of the uh, GPT model, and now we have 4, and so on and so forth. Like, we, we're already there. So that's the chatbot capability. Level 1, check. Check. Now level 2, they call them reasoners. Human-level problem solving. So we're in level 1 right now with chatty AIs. So the second one, reasoners, think smarty pants problem solvers. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I am chatting with Clippy and Clippy knows how to solve, has agents and all this instrumentation that allows it to do 17 things. The 18th comes along, right? It has never been trained to book airlines, right? It does everything, but it just never does air travel. So is that what is happening? Is that what a... Smarty Pants is like all this one figures out how to do that part by connecting the dots. Is that what we're talking about here? Well, think about kind of an assistant. So the levels of an assistant. The first one is you can communicate with them. Uh, you can ask them to do things. You have to be very specific on how you want to do things, right? Because they have these capabilities uh, like ChatGPT. The second one is around reasoning. So reasoning, like we have a problem and we break that problem into different steps. And then we try to solve those steps and try to come up with solutions around that problem. Think about how can we, as, a, as an assistant, we can say, hey, my, my enrollment is, is not as high as last year. And we've been doing some strategies. And here's some of the things that we've been doing. Can we walk through, like, what would be, like, what are some of the things that could be affecting this? And, and let's, let's reason through uh, what are the problems and what can we do there? So that's one way of thinking about it. Another way is like uh, you can take that in the medical field or you can take it in, in terms of solving kind of some more complex problems around like logic problems and, and working through and breaking that down. Of course, we can talk about marketing. We can talk about how do you build a piece of software? And it's like, okay, I have this problem that I need to solve. How, how do we break down that problem and, and how do we think through it? So that's that second level. Right. Something that I'd like to add here, right? So on level one, what is happening in the current technology that allows these chatbots is that the algos are literally trained to predict a word or a pixel or an image, right? So this ability of basically using training data, observations as seen before, to estimate what is the right thing for the future, right? But in this case, recently now, it's a level up because there's deduction, understanding of subdomain knowledge to come and say, that's not a prediction per se, because as I've seen it in the past, it's actually a new scenario because now you understand what you're asking for, the domain knowledge in a way, the, the constraints. And that's really, really exciting. Yeah, that's in the near future, right? So that's maybe maybe we're doing some work there right now uh, at Element, we're doing some of that stuff, right, around campaign management and some of the more advanced kind of proactive agents that we're building. But that's the part where we're getting there very soon on the capabilities on these models. Uh, we're trying to get there with some additional augmentations and so on and so forth. But that's near future, a couple of months or whatever. Now, the third level, right? Third level, agents. Agents. So... Basically, systems that can take action. So the first one was about conversing back and forth, getting some basic stuff done, where we are today, producing content, things like that. Second one, they reason through things, but we still have to be give them the input, right? We still have to, you know... Permit it. Interact with them. Permit it, exactly. Give, give them incentive that that's a good idea. Yeah, let's build, right? Exactly. Think, oh, I, I like what he just did, Gotcha. Exactly. Human in the loop, right? So we talk about this human mm. in the loop. So that's that second level. Now, third level is agents. So AI systems that can work for days or systems that can take actions on their own. Is, is back to how I was trying to do the assistant use cases of booking. Is level three the agent now the one that maybe actually takes the next action of what you need is an airplane and this is the ticket and based on your schedule is booked? Yes or no, buy it. They use a credit card. Exactly. These are the goal-oriented agents, right? So you're, you're essentially 
give them goals and give them tactics. And then they say, okay, you're responsible for, you know, doing this or having this outcome. And then they're doing all the works and they can, they can kind of reason through, they can do the work, they can try things out, they can test it. And essentially they're responsible for achieving certain goals, but they're doing the work on their own. They're taking actions on their own. A very good example of this can be identified as, for example, this folks have been trying to do this for a while, but they're not really there yet at all, is this idea of giving these agents or this AI assistants access to money and saying, you know, go invest this money, right? And the goal is to maximize the, uh, the return on it. Got it. Quantitative finance and algorithmic trading is a thing, right? So now what we're talking about is, and one, one of the state of the arts is high frequency trading, as you know, right? So if we're just talking about a whole new horizon and many more applications coming through. Fascinating. So if you think about this, and for example, and I mean, we can take a number of different scenarios, but think about this. This is what we're kind of getting ready to start building an element is this goal-oriented, proactive assistance. We're giving them goals. This is our next, JC. This is the, so. So AI is not there yet. I I, I thought you were gonna say you're gonna. We're ready to take tuition deposits and invest them for you, but that's not what you said. Invest it for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is a plug-in and element called invest your tuition, and we will give you three x returns. Not that one, artist. Not that one. Not that one. That's only for that's only for uh, for private investors. Right? <laughs> um, yes, and 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 the the the, the fun thing about this agent stage or level in AGI is that it needs to bring best of the three worlds of understanding the conversation, right? Right. Understanding the domain knowledge so it can reason, right? But then once all that is check, 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 the next action, I'm going to use the word, is in context because a computer could think that the best thing for a student is to show up in camp in front of the classroom until the professor gets him in. Statistically speaking, is a great way to get into the class. Algorithmically speaking, probably is a more efficient way than spend three months and emails. But we know it doesn't make sense. So there's the reasoning, the domain knowledge, and then the recommendation. The agent will literally go rogue. So this is where it's a really interesting evolution, and I can see how the building blocks of conversations, knowledge, uh, reasoning, then now it's basically the foundation for an agent. Yeah. So we take, you know, let's go with the Clippy or with the assistant or Clippy example, right? So the first one is able to, or Clippy or she, whatever you want to, however it. you want to, it, you want to gender it, able to provide, you communicate back and forth. You ask it for opinions, it gives you opinions, you can com communicate back and forth, you ask it to write stuff for you, it can write that stuff. The second level, Clippy, you say, Clippy, you know, I really have this hard problem to solve. Can you help me do it? And it goes out and then starts reasoning through that. And it comes back and it gives you strategies and thinks about the, you know, how to solve that problem, right? So you can go back and forth and reason through it, uh, a business problem. The third one is you say, hey, Clippy, I don't care what the strategy is, but here, you know, I need you as, a, as an assistant, you know, I need to be in, in this city at this date get that done, right? And now it's a goal-oriented, you know, approach where it's doing all the things that it needs to do, different actions, work in the background in order to get that done. Or it can have a goal of, you know, here is some money, give me the, the maximum ROI. It goes back and does all that work. Hey there, it's Mallory, Chief Strategist of Enrollify. Higher Ed is facing a leadership crisis. The demands on today's college and university leaders are skyrocketing, and talent is leaving the industry at an unprecedented rate. New leaders like you are emerging, but no one is getting the proper training to be successful. Well, Enrollify is here to change that. Our new course, Lessons in Leadership, taught by Dr. Carrie Phillips, will prepare you to be a confident, empathetic, and effective leader. From systems thinking to adaptive leadership, building culture to handling difficult decisions, this comprehensive online course is perfect for new and aspiring leaders. Don't wait. The course starts September 9th, and for a lucky group of 26 students, we have the option to add interactive sessions with Dr. Phillips for personalized guidance. Visit enrollify.org to learn more.
so that's this level three, right? So that's when AI is going to be in the workplace and it's going to add the most to the enterprise value because now you can see how we can, I would say, substitute some of the use cases for what we do or, or some of the use cases that, that you know, humans are good at. And you can see how AI can actually work on those goals and, and do that in the background and amplify and do a lot more than, than humans can, right? This is when we unlock a lot of that enterprise value of AI, the possibility. So that's maybe a year away, maybe a year and a half away, as some of the more advanced models come around, but we're gonna see pieces of that coming out even sooner, maybe six months to a year, I would say. Level four. Level four is innovators. Hmm. So, what that means is essentially AI that can aid in invention. So sci-fi stuff, right? If I am able to converse, if I'm able to reason, and then I'm able to reproduce tasks and I'm goal-oriented, it, it's inherently, and this is where the generative aspect, it's just inherently logical for us to think that the technology would have a tremendous incentive to say, what do you mean you bring yourself to the doctor to get blood, right? When I can look at all your vitals from your last Starbucks coffee. And all of a sudden, Starbucks coffee has a proposal, <laughs> totally going wing, uh, left wing here, but a proposal of, you know, of something that they have not done, right? And then services, work streams, like literally the, the linear thinking that human we do it's basically starts taking jumps years ahead or nonlinear thinking unfolds because again, this is what this pattern recognition, things that we know um, AI is much better than us can achieve. And this is really exciting to me. It sounds science, science fiction, of course. This is the kind of thing that we can see the loom and doom of, they take over because they realize, you know, we produce energy and they need energy. So if, I don't know, let's connect them to a matrix type of thing. But, it's really exciting that the technology should be able to connect the dots between opportunity and that evolution of generative AI. The part that I find the most promising here, and I, I, if that came across negative, artists, we live in a world that is resource intensive, water, soil, food. And what I know is that I see a supply and demand curve that do not match. More people, same resources. More people, same resources. Unless this balance formula changes to the same people now, they figure out a way to reutilize resources, we don't get a future. So this level four of innovators, it's what I cannot wait for. So my generation, my kids and, and, and their descendants, get a chance in this world. So I cannot wait from a technology abundance point of view. This is something I've been waiting for. Yeah. So what gets me excited about this level of AI, when we get to this level of AI, is the ability for new and novel solutions and inventions to come about. Yeah. So as humans right now, we're using AI as a tool, right? We're using it to amplify our capability. But at the end of the day, we still have to think about like what is possible and, and what, what are the areas that we need to poke at in order to see if there is invention there. But when we get to this level, then in order to solve a problem, AI can think about a novel way of something that did not exist before, but create a new solution to solve that particular problem. When we talk about if the goal of the AI is to keep us healthy as long as possible, it can come back and say, hey, here's a new drug or a new, a new supplement that you can take that doesn't exist in nature, or maybe it does, but here's here's a synthetic thing that you can take that's going to remove a certain, you know, gene or predisposition that, that you're going to, like you have right now, so a disease. So it's targeting and it's coming up with new and novel solutions for that. The other thing around energy and scarcity, which is really interesting for, for us, uh, for the, what you mentioned, is that in order to solve the, an energy problem, you can come back and you'll say, okay, here's a way that you can start thinking about you know, having better physics, right? Or having better solar capturing 
devices, right? So solar panels or, or you know, sun right now, I don't know what the percentage efficient, efficiency is that we're capturing, but he can invent new things. He can make them better. And, and that's the process. And that's the, that's that fourth level that is going to unlock a lot of different things and accelerate our resource constraint right now and open up a lot of those possibilities. One more point as we speak about this range of opportunities. I'd like all of you to start thinking about how as a society, humanity and planet, we benefited from drugs or materials that allow us to capture uh, lose weight or sempic, right? And and solar panels. So now I don't need water and you know if I can reuse the energy, right? Majority, majority of these innovations come out of luck. Think about Osempic. It was not designed to do weight loss. It's not a weight loss management medicine. It's actually diabetics, right? And that problem has been studied and also the size effects are here and then there's a pivot. The classical pivot in technology, it's real, right? You design for X and then you pivot and then you become successful. This is what's not going to happen in that stage. The intentional aspect is I need to give you materials that absorb the sun at a higher rate because we cannot produce these panels anymore. Exactly. We need to lose 6% of body weight in the planet because people's you know, needs are not longer withstanding. There's too many heart attacks. I need you to figure out a way to deploy more nutrition in the water because I don't know if we just cannot feed people and so on and so on and so forth. The intentionality and the matching of this is what we're trying to do with the solution. It's really, really, really incredible. So, yeah, I mean, so again, we're talking about capabilities of the AI, the manifestation of those capabilities are going to be how we deploy it and how it gets rolled out. And, and, we're, spe and we're speculating right now at the moment of what the manifestations could be, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It can, it can take a long time to actually deploy this. So we're talking about, hey, we have AI that is capable of invention. We have AI that is capable of conversation or human-like conversations, the, the chatbots with us. The second one, we have AI that is capable of doing reasoning and doing solving problems. The third one is able of solving a lot of problems in, in kind of succession with a goal. And the fourth one is coming up with new ideas and new concepts and new inventions as it's solving those problems, right? That's the fourth one. One, two, three, it stays in the box, in the human box. In yeah. four, it breaks the box. It breaks the box. Yeah. So those are the capabilities. There's a level five. Really, I, I think we're there in generative AI. So what is five? So five, they call it... So, <laughs> So they're, they're giving them names, right? It's like, you know, the first one is called chatbots. The second one is reasoners. The third one is agents. The fourth one is innovators. And the fifth one is called organizations. Hmm. And it's really AI that can do the work of an organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, right? So AI, they can do the job of their entire organization. Speechless? Like, <laughs> no, no, I just, I'm, I'm hesitating if I want to take you and the audience in this riff. But let's talk about legal entities as an organization. You know what a legal entity is? It's a human manufacturer construct. What's a company? Can you touch it? Can you feel it? But it has a balance sheet. It has a brand. It has all these artifacts. So in the, I don't know, 1500s or 200s or whenever it happened that a lot of smart people thought that let's create these entities in assign assets, right? And let's assign valuation, assign those type of things. Was a type of organization, it's human powered, with with the box of humanity. So now that you remove the box level four, yeah, the AI organization, whatever that means, and I'm not even going to try to pencil it down because I don't think I have the IQ to do that, artist. That's the world, right? Where things like entities, marriage happiness or education, social constructs are rethought. How's that for a Friday morning, my friend? <laughs> wow. I mean, we're going deep on this one. Uh, the way that I look at it is what was interesting uh, a couple of months ago, there was an interview with Sam Altman, the CEO of, uh, of OpenAI, and he got asked, like, where are we going next? And, and he kind of let out that their vision. So th again, these five levels are how OpenAI thinks about the different capabilities of what they're building internally and how they're, they're doing their scorecard on where they are 
at the level of capabilities to artificial general intelligence, right? And basically, one of the things that he said is that we're going to see over the next few years companies that are going to reach $1 billion in, in valuations and then market capitalization or that are being built by less than 10 people. And then he said, and then the next level after that is that we're going to see companies that are organizations that can be run just by one person, but they will still be able to grow at that value of $1 billion plus. Because the, the, the counter is that a $1 billion company, it's thousands with geographical footprint but but exactly but the second derivative of that is the economic enablement of hiring a thousand people in this geographical distributed uh, workforce correct there's a, there's the alignment of the level four and five for this thing to land because what happens with the organization there's one billion only run by one one human that human is super rich versus today there is thousands of people who benefit from that value creation value is an important thing that the the did that get stressed out on if you have one company, one billion uh, one person, how does value distribution take place in this? It doesn't. It's just it's part of that one person. Like that's the whole idea here is that it used to be that services companies are like you you you're a carpenter or you're somebody like you can only produce as much value, you get paid based on the work that you're doing and the amount of work that you can do is it's based on your time that you put into it, right? That's how much value. So it's like I'm painting something, it's like, okay, person one can do the same job as person two, as person three, this is very replaceable. So the output is very fixed. And then it's like knowledge economy came around and now we are able to do things that are more, you know, more valuable, right? They can be, get us better outcomes, they can, we can solve problems. So that's what we're talking about here. So if we look at these levels of artificial intelligence around capabilities or how we produce value for organization or in, in the workforce, level one would be, hey, this is just an intern. This is like an intern. I need to tell them exactly what to do. They're able to converse because they went to a good school. They have some knowledge and they have great knowledge, but they still don't know anything. Level two is like they, they've been around for five years and they have gained uh, some domain knowledge. So they're able to reason through and, and solve some problems you know, for us. So, so now in this case, you're getting maybe uh, a graduate student or something like that, or, or maybe somebody who's worked in an organization for a while that knows the domain knowledge. Level three is you're getting an expert, right? You're getting an expert who's a VP level or, or somebody who went to graduate school, came out and is like, okay, I know this inside and out, but I can, it's a manager. I can put people together to solve these problems and we're going to solve these and we're going to take actions to get to this goal. So think about a department in, within an organization or, or, or think about like that VP level. Innovators is now think about like a PhD level person where not only can they solve the domain specific things, but they can, they're innovating and they are producing new novel ideas, right? It can be in science, it can be on organizations. So these are these are those CEOs, they're innovators that they're they're doing all these different like novel things, right? And then level five is like it's the whole organization. Those innovators still need a lot of people to do that work and to to base that. But now level five is the ability to have a whole organization do the work of the output and the value of a whole organization, right? So that's what we're talking about, this level five capability. So able to do all of the orchestration, innovate when it needs new innovation, and then be able to be specific and do the work uh, that's capable on all of these. And that's really AGI because, you know, an organization, if we, if we need to solve a problem, we're bringing in a new expert from the outside and automatically we're getting the capabilities and the knowledge on how to solve certain tasks based on bringing in that person. Think about a good analogy, I forget uh, who mentioned this one, but if you know in the Matrix, right, there is the ability, like when Trinity, she needs to know how to, how to ride a, uh, a helicopter, right? And there's an helicopter and she doesn't know, but she just downloads a piece of information on how to ride a helicopter, and now she gains those capabilities. But that's what we're talking about here is that 
that fifth level is the ability to learn autonomously how to solve new problems that we haven't seen before. So if we were to come into a helicopter and say, hey, I don't know how to ride this thing, and it can take me some time to figure it out, this is a new problem for me, well, that's AGI, right? AGI will, will learn how to figure that out. That's level five. On the level systems, AGI is attained at level five, at level four, level three. What can we say about AGI, the AGI state then? So AGI is, is again, very subjective in terms of the capabilities, right? Like when we talk about AGI, we talk about autonomous problem solving, right? So it can learn and do new things that it did not know before autonomously and solve new, new problem and tasks. So what, what, you're, what you're saying there, Artis, because it's not that we are like saying there's no AGI, it's just that in terms of capabilities, it's like us being humans. We've been humans for billions of years, right? Um, but then we did not know how to write at one point. We learned the capabilities of writing. We did not know how to, I don't know, hunt. Uh, we did not know how to cook. We did not know how to make fire. We did not know how to code in Python. We did not know how to speak multi-languages. So those capabilities e evolve, but the humanness has been around. So that's basically what we're saying, what you're saying, that there's a capability build up and it just becomes more interesting, fascinating. Yeah, so it's not like a switch. It's not a switch that we flip and now all once of a sudden become AGI. It's this, it's a progression of capabilities and it's kind of a grayscale and that's what OpenAI has put together. It's like, hey, here's the scorecard. Here's where we are in that trajectory. Once we get to that five level, it will be maybe five years, six years. The deployment will be even longer than that. So by the end of the decade, we're going to have and we're going to see a lot of the benefits. And, and in, the, in the 2030s, we'll probably see a lot of the benefits of, of that reasoning and that, those capabilities being brought in. Are you a fan of uh, Ray Kurzweil? Yeah, of course. Singularity is near. Singularity, yeah. So his new book, Singularity is Nearer, hmm. is actually dropped two weeks ago. So I'm in the middle of that. And this was inspired a little bit by that. So I'm getting some of those. But this idea that we can become one with his systems, and, and that's kind of the next evolution. And his timeline is 2029. That's what he has predicted, that singularity. Five years. Five years, yeah, where AGI wow. will be achieved. It was purely based on computational capabilities. So computation getting cheaper and cheaper every single year. There is this line chart that he shows in his book. If you don't have time to read the book, go listen to his latest TED Talk. And uh, he, he kind of goes through that. So it's pretty interesting. All right. We're going to leave you lots of stuff in here, very in-depth. Let's, let's come back to level one, everybody. Let's come back to level one. <laughs> That's where we are today, level one. Yes, Chatbots. level one. Chatbots, the excitement of... Basically, uh, my parting thoughts are, this is happening, everybody. Get along with us, because our journey is to basically understand how these capabilities unfold. How do we bring this to your domains in higher education? And how do we have fun doing it? So jump jump along uh, the bus by subscribing, writing us, and kind of telling us how these uh, sessions and podcasts are speaking to you. Artis, sign us off. Thanks, everybody. Till next time. Generation AI is part of the Enrollify podcast network. If you like this podcast, chances are you're going to like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing weekly, and we've got a wide range of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed leaders and professionals like you find their next big idea. They feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts, like Jamie Hunt, Seth O'Dell, Jenny Lee Fowler, Brian Gross, and many of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform that's helping institutions all over the country create meaningful, personalized, and engaging connections with their prospects and students. Learn more at element451.com.